Hey, it's me. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to see the Christmas decorations being put up. It's that time of year again. And so with the holiday season almost here and many celebrating Christmas, I thought it might be a good time to talk about Christ, Christ consciousness. And what I propose is the deeper, now often overlooked, meaning of the season. So who is Christ? Now, when I say Christ, feel free to think of Christ consciousness, if that resonates more with you. Some Christian denominations say Christ is God. Now, I wonder if that's entirely accurate, because even in the Bible, Jesus says himself, he's not the father or the creator. On the other hand, some people think Jesus was just a wise man or a teacher kind of like others who've lived throughout history, and I don't think that's the whole truth either. Jesus, the man, from what I've come to understand, was the incarnation of the Christ spirit, or Christ consciousness, the highest and most exalted of all created beings, a direct creation of God, sharing the same substance as God. Now, we all have this divine spark within us, what we've been calling the higher self, and we uncover it as we grow spiritually. But I think, and I would argue Christ had the substance in a unique and unparalleled way, and that's what set him apart. Like people often wonder or will ask, why was he chosen? If we're all children of God, why is he considered, quote unquote, higher or better, as, you know, we think in comparisons? Isn't that unfair? And the thoughts might be deep down, even if we don't say them out loud. I think they're there. I also think that this mode of thinking is actually the root of disharmony and negativity, is like a seed of doubt or jealousy that can lead us away from trusting in God's love and wisdom. Like, is that line of thinking serving us in any way? So I propose that we just let go of that line of thinking, okay? So how did Jesus Christ save humanity? What made his actions so great? His purpose wasn't just about sharing his teachings even though his teachings absolutely were profound and beautiful. The thing is, other teachings exist that share similar wisdom, right? Another part of his purpose was to symbolize, through his life and death, the journey each of us takes to reach a higher spiritual state. His experiences, like facing trials, having faith during tough times, and overcoming ego and self-will, serve as a guide for us. His resurrection symbolizes the eternal happiness we can achieve once we overcome our own egos. And I wonder too, if even that, even that isn't the main reason for his life. Because as I've come to understand it, the most crucial part of his mission may have been to ensure that every being has the opportunity to find their way back to God. If Jesus hadn't succeeded, maybe someone else would have tried, but it wasn't guaranteed that anyone would succeed. He had to come to earth and face all kinds of suffering, completely alone, sometimes without any divine protection, resisting all evil and temptation purely by his own free will. This perhaps was necessary to keep spiritual laws intact so that everyone, even the darkest forces, could have a fair chance to return to God. God has the power to do anything, but he doesn't break his own laws. He doesn't break divine law. If God had forced a solution, many beings not yet ready to return would have been left behind forever, including possibly any one of us, including myself, maybe including you, 
only through this intricate plan could everyone, everyone, eventually find their way back. It's a complex idea, and I don't claim in any way to fully understand it or to be able to explain it. There are far more spiritually developed people who can do a better job at this. But what I'm saying, even if we think of it at this humble, humble level of understanding, it helps us to see that God's justice is perfect and that Jesus' role was incredibly significant. You might ask, can we reach God and achieve perfection only through Jesus Christ then? And I think the answer is both yes and no, which sounds confusing, but let me explain. You can definitely reach a high level of spiritual development through any of the world's great religions, including non-Christian ones, or any spiritual path for that matter. You don't have to leave your faith or tradition. If you found happiness and spiritual nourishment where you are, and if your faith helps you work on self-knowledge, self-improvement, and being completely honest with yourself, then it serves your spirit well. The key is to purify our lower self and overcome the ego. How we do that or where we find the guidance to do so, I don't think is what's important. By working on ourselves in this way, we naturally become open to deeper truths, including the role Christ played in the history of creation. And in that sense, no, you don't have to recognize Jesus Christ right now in order to reach God. That's not what I'm saying. True understanding comes through personal growth and purification over time. And it's just that not many people take on this challenge, unfortunately. And at the same time, Christ being the Messiah, an exalted being, is a significant part of the greater truth. So whether you're ready to accept that doesn't change the truth itself, right? It doesn't mean you should pray to Jesus Christ. Perhaps your prayers are directed or should be directed to God, the creator anyway. No, what I'm proposing is simply gratitude. To be grateful to Christ for his immense sacrifice, without which we could not return to divine light. And I'm not saying to feel something you don't feel or to force a feeling. Some of us might not be ready to fully embrace this yet, and that's okay. I think it's more like when the time comes and you feel that sense of gratitude, you'll understand its importance. So even if you don't formally recognize the Christian religion, it's not about religion. I encourage you to think about it on a deeper level. Like all religions have truths that can help us grow. And all religions have their imperfections too. What's important is that you follow what your spirit truly needs and desires. Okay? And I don't think that necessarily means dismissing Christ entirely. So it's not about religion. It's bigger than that. Christ played a crucial role, plays a crucial role in our journey back to God. And what I'm saying is that he deserves our gratitude and acknowledgement. He's kind of like the best friend and strongest helper we could ever have. Again, I don't claim to be any kind of historian. I don't claim to be any kind of expert. But I wonder, did there need to be a divide within any religion? A divide, for example, between Judaism and Christianity. Like, was that part of God's plan? I don't think so. Maybe it was more because of us humans. Humans created these labels and then the separations that inevitably come from the labels. From a spiritual perspective, these labels don't mean anything. Christ was born as Jesus at a particular time and place for good reasons, intending for his teachings to expand without causing division. Splitting into separate groups, as we see clearly play out in the world today, leads to chaos and separation from God. Our ultimate goal is unity with God. Unity, consciousness, which is the opposite of division. Now, because Christ is so important in our return to God, 
we won't be able to fully reach God without him in the end. Denying this might stem from stubbornness or imperfections in our heart, holding on desperately to those labels and judgments we have created. As long as these imperfections exist, can we fully unite with God? So what I propose is for you to ask yourself, what if it's most important to simply open my heart and mind, regardless of what religion I may or may not be following? It's not about abandoning abandoning your faith. You don't need to abandon your faith. It's not necessary unless, I mean, if you feel called to do so. Consider that what we're talking about here may be true, even if you're unsure or have doubts. Like the people who've influenced you, be it your family, your community, your church, they may have shared some truths but no single group has all the answers. As someone seeking spirituality on the spiritual path, it's important to be open to truth wherever it comes from, not to be stubborn or think that being open-minded shows weakness. That's a misunderstanding. The real question is, what is true? If God is truth, wisdom, and love, If we deny truth because of pride or stubbornness, are we not denying some aspect of God? So what if, what if we focus on seeking truth above all else? Is that what truly matters? Something to think about. I love you. Let's connect soon.